Hello and welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Ariel. We are on our way to Baby Nugget. It's north of Watson Lake. To stop off to admire the view here. I think we're still at the Yukon. This is absolutely beautiful. And pan around. Okay, here's Walter's impression of one of the employees. Oh, of extremely unhelpful. The male uh, doesn't want to be here, doesn't want to help anybody, and doesn't care about anybody. The woman is extremely nice and helpful. Uh, I went up to the restaurant to see if I could access the internet because Mark said you'll need to go to the offices to get the internet to work, and I needed to process a payroll correction. And I get up there and. I don't know who told you that. No, the internet doesn't work up here. You've got to go to the laundry room. And I said, oh, can I verify the access code? No, if your wagon master didn't give it to you, then you can't have it. You need to get it from him. And I said, well, it's either playing golf or, or go fishing, go golfing. Yeah, it's one of those, but you need to verify it with him. And I said, okay, so I'll walk all the way back down there and get it from him and remember how unhelpful you were. And I walked out. And then I saw the woman still pumping gas and helping people out there, so I just verified it with her. And she said, oh, just go to the laundry room. It's go golfing, or go fishing, and it's uh, no problem. It'll work perfectly in there. It just doesn't have very far of a reach. And she's just super nice and helpful, and he's just not. Just very miserable, probably had a very miserable life, and is sad that he's stuck here. But anyway, uh, she's nice. He's not. Park's okay. Ariel can continue. All right, Baby Nugget RV Park. I don't know where we are. We're north of Watson Lake. It's really cute. I like the park. It's this pebbly, gravelly stuff. Some patches of dirt, but not too many. As you can see, it's nice and big between the parks. The only thing missing is they don't have sewer. They have 30 amp water cable, no sewer. They do have a dump, so we will need to dump tomorrow if Walter takes a shower, because I know I'm gonna take a shower. So, nicely spaced. I have to find Melissa and Bruce's brick. I don't know which ones theirs are. It's this one. Okay, so we're gonna walk around, take a look at the park. Where's their front door? I think the front door's over here. Okay, the park is long enough where we don't have to unhitch, which I like. None of us have is unhitched. It's really, it's really nice. It's nice and big and airy, so I like this park. Sunny dump. I guess that's where we're dumping tomorrow. Over there. So I guess we took over this part of the park. Okay, there's the dump. So we'll be using that tomorrow morning. Four o'clock. 30 minutes from now. Root beer floats, nachos, meet in the building over there. Okay, we're meeting in that building. Okay, they have an RV wash. Apparently it's a dollar a minute for, to use the spray gun. It's a little bit pricey. Okay, the restrooms are clean. The bathroom looks clean. Oh, there's a coin. One coin. Oh, one loon is two and a half minutes. 
for the shower. There's three of them. Bathroom looks fairly clean. Okay, they do have a restaurant in the campsite. They're open until nine, nine o'clock. So we're having pork ribs here later tonight, vegetables and potatoes. Tell you how that review goes. Hopefully it's good. So it's a good little park. We're not, we're essentially in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> There's nothing around here. We're just surrounded by forests. It's Alaska Highway right there. And there's nothing else. This is just an overnight stop for us. Here at Nugget City. And this is this is it. This is Nugget City. This is RV Park. There's the laundry room. We're not gonna do laundry. Three dollars. That's expensive. Nugget City. There's John. <laughs> and there's the dryers. The dryer's three dollars too. It's a little pricey. Especially when he got to my my coach because I said, you know, there's no free rides in life. And you've been getting soft riding in all these fancy RVs and living a, a luxury lifestyle. And you come to my coach, you gotta work. And so I put him to work, but the first thing we had to do is we had to outfit him. I said, look, you know, I'm pretty OCD about making sure I got all the right tools. So, knee pads, tool belt, all that kind of stuff. And so we set about building Moose some cleaning supplies. So, <laughs> so we got, we got Moose his own microfiber towels. I even gave him his own hose and his own bucket. So he, can, so he can wash, and he's got his spray stuff over there, and the hardest part was the knee pads. You ever tried to find knee pads for a moose? So we had to make custom moose pads, knee pads for moose. So now that he's got his knee pads, so he can do all your wheels, whoever gets him next, and he's got all the tools. So if you'll notice that my rig is shining today, yeah. so we stopped on the side of the road before I we got to the park, that. and I, I put him to work, work to make sure that he earned his keep in my coach. <laughs> but the story actually goes back before that. So we, we got Moose outfitted, and so whoever gets him next, he's ready to go clean your tires and wash your coach. But when he first got to the coach last night, I told him, I said, you know, I've heard a lot of bad things about things that you've been doing in these other people's coaches. And uh, this surreptitious, undercover, spy stuff. And I said, you got a clean slate with me. Whatever, whatever happened before is, is gone, is behind us now. And so we got to talking about, about family. And, uh, you know, he started sharing with me some of his famous family members, like uh, Bullwinkle the Moose. And that was one of his uncles. And he told me the story of how Bullwinkle got into, into TV and cartoons. And, and then he had uh, some other relatives that ended up on people's mantles, you know, as, as trophies. And he said that was the one thing he didn't want to do, was end up on somebody's trophy case. So then he asked me about my family. And I started telling him, you know, that my mom and dad were both in the military back in the war. And, and uh, kids used to make fun of me when I was a kid about my mother wearing combat boots. And I was really proud of that. I so, said, you know, having your mother in the military was kind of a cool thing. Well, Moose, you know, he's done so many wrongs in his life. That there's no way he could go in the military, so he couldn't qualify. But um, I thought he had a clean slate. Well, he did with me. <laughs> but that didn't mean with the military. So, so Moose went out last night, you know. It was a little bit cold to wash the RV. We were going to wash it last night, but it was getting pretty chilly out. And so Moose went out last night, and, oh, I guess I should back up. So... We were telling him about how Irene and I didn't have the big wedding that most of her siblings had in Germany. You know, we eloped and went to Denmark and got married. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Hawaii and we had twin sons that were born in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be careful how much information, personal information, you tell Moose. Because mm -hmm. he takes it to heart. So last night he snuck out and he went and linked up with Colonel Moose. And Colonel Moose... <laughs> is now his spouse. Oh my oh. God. Oh. How did you find that? And Colonel Moose 
just happened to be a single mo <laughs> moose mother, and she had little twin mooses. I want the girl. And so now we have the whole moose family. Oh, oh, and so moose, moose is going to hold down the fort for Colonel Moose so she can go serve our country. And he's going to take care of the two little twin mooses that came into the family. Thank what God. What about it's illegitimate? Yeah. There are a few that haven't done it yet. Now you, what if you